Hello, YouTube. <laughs> I bet you haven't seen this face in a while. Well, you haven't, so anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, I figured today would be the, the perfect time to go ahead and post this video update. Uh, I know it's many months behind where I should have been. And I even said I was going to write down what I said. I had just previously made the video and then deleted it because I didn't have a script. And I was like, I should probably write down what I'm saying so I don't ramble. And then I didn't make the script and just jumped right into this one. So let's hope that I actually get it right um, and not go to 20 minutes like the last one was. Um, anyways, someone had posted on one of my YouTube videos something like, we miss you or come back or something like that. And it kind of made me think like, yeah, now would be the right time to go ahead and post a video. So two weeks later, <laughs> see the joke there? Um, I ended up making one. And I know that my fiance will say like, no one really cares about your videos since you're not like a big influencer. And yeah, fair point, harsh but fair. <laughs> but again, because of that comment, it made me realize like there are some people out there that have like seen my videos in the past and have some sort of like interest in what I'm doing, you know, because I did post the whole like Florida to California thing and then people were interested in that. And um, now, spoiler alert, I'm back in Florida. Um, and that's what I wanted to make this video about because a lot has happened in the past year or however long it's been since my last video. And I wanted to go ahead and give an update on everything that has happened. So let's get started. Uh, first things first, yes, I am back in Florida. We moved back in August, my fiance and I, Sam. Uh, I don't know if I posted. Yeah, you know, I did say we were engaged. So yeah, we're engaged. Um, we were supposed to have the wedding in October, but because of COVID, that didn't happen. Then it was supposed to be in February on the 27th, and it turns out that that's only four days away, and we don't have anything planned, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, so now we're planning for next February, and then that'll give us a year from now, which will go ahead and give us enough time to save up money to go ahead and do everything wedding-y and planning-wise for a whole year. And then hopefully by then, COVID's like on the down slope, maybe, and people will actually wanna fly in for the wedding, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we are back in Florida and the reasoning behind that is because when we first moved out to LA, I had told Sam like, Hey, I'm going to give this five years, you know, to be an actor, to have something happen. You know, I want to give it five years to the point where I am actively working on like a studio lot in either a TV show or a movie or something that I can sit there and go, yes, I did a movie, I did this, I did that. And then that way I can say the five years were not wasted and I can actually keep moving forward in LA. We're back in Florida, so clearly that didn't happen. I had a few student films, I had a few music videos, and then I booked a commercial in January um, for Japan Airlines. And that was actually a speaking role. It was actually like my face. It was one of those narrative ones where I'm like walking and then you hear my voiceover. And it was really funny, but because of COVID, it kind of stabbed it. And it was supposed to air in February and then they're like, nope, COVID. And then it, it's probably never gonna air um, pessimistically. Realistically, it might not air for like another year because Japan Airlines is slowly like putting in videos of like, welcome back or like, we're happy to see you guys back and all that kind of thing because it's been a year since all this has happened and now they are slowly but surely um, welcoming people back to their airline. So maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel for my commercial and then I can actually like point to it and say like, hey, that was me and like that's really funny. But for the time being, we've moved back and um, we've moved back to be closer to family. We are now living with my mother-in-law, her mother, and her brother and so it's the four of us in the house and you know it's nice because we constantly have someone to like talk to we have someone to you know I don't know like to have family dinners with and I've never been able to experience that you know I didn't really have like family dinners it was always like get your food and then go into the bedroom and eat or whatever but so it's been nice and like we have family get-togethers with her sister and her aunt and everything like once every like two or three weeks so it's it's nice to be part of that family um and then when we start having kids uh then we're gonna actually go ahead and have them grow up around aunts and uncles and all that kind of stuff and because of family that leads me to my next point um of this video was december 30th my mother passed away and uh that has been 
very uh, it's been a roller coaster for me it really has because um, I'm gonna try to make this quick <laughs> A few days after Christmas, so my mother for the longest time has had COPD, which is a lung disease that I'm guessing she got from all of her years of smoking, and uh, it just wore down her lungs, so now she was on oxygen all the time, and she had fallen previously in a few years ago, which then she had to have surgery and have bars in her back or rods, which means that she wasn't able to walk properly, and then they told her that she could walk again, but... Her legs were very atrophied, and she just refused to do any leg exercises, so she was pretty much bedridden, but not. And then she could, like, walk with a walker and use, like, a wheelchair and stuff, but she just was refusing to, like, do any exercise to get her legs better. So one day um, after Christmas, my aunt, who was living with her at the time to try to recuperate her, um, found her unresponsive and cold and without her oxygen tube in her nose. And so she called the paramedics, and they brought her to the hospital. And that was, I think, the 27th. Um, I went in, and I was the only one that was allowed in. And I saw her, and she was, like, very out of her mind. Like, because I, I guess she had taken a bunch of, like, oxycodone or something. And people were theorizing that she was trying to kill herself. And um, so she was kind of out of it, and then I had to leave. And then the next day, they gave her, like... Narcan and it like calmed her down and I went and I talked to her and I was like hey mom like how are you like everything's gonna be good like we're gonna transfer you to like a nursing facility so you can actually have around the clock care um, and you know recuperation and physical therapy everything's gonna be great and I told her that and I showed her a video of me learning how to play guitar spoiler alert I'm learning how to play guitar <laughs> and um she was like that's really cool she said the words that's really cool and so she was actually able to like have conversations and she was able to understand and everything and it seemed like things were going fine and I said okay mother I'll see you tomorrow and that was at about 12 o'clock and at about 2 30 they called me and said that they were trying to feed her um an insured drink and she started asphyxiating which is she could not um catch her breath she just constantly was not being able to breathe so they took her to the ICU and they had her on um, an oxygen mask and they had to wrap gloves around her hands because she was trying to rip the cords off and she was very out of it and I guess she didn't know where she was or what she was doing because she just kept like looking around and she had these big like mittens on that because she kept trying to like rip it off of her face so I r rushed to the hospital and I was by her side and they were like, hey, you know, like, we need these on. And I kept telling her, I was like, you can't rip these off. Like, you need these. And she just wasn't understanding it. And then um, I left and came back to the hospital the next day. And I had planned to stay with her long term uh, because on my way to the hospital, they had told me, like, have you thought about a DNR, a do not resuscitate? And I hadn't thought about that because you don't really think like hey if my only mother because I'm an only child if my only parent flatlines like I have to be the one to say yeah don't bring her back to life but you know I thought about it and I talked to Kim her sister about it and we had agreed that you know she had told us previously if she does flatline ever like she doesn't want to be brought back and that hurts to hear but you know that's something that I had to do and I had to sign it because like legally I'm like her I don't know next of kin or something that I can do these like lawful things for her and then um, went ahead and they started talking about hospice and that they they're only giving her maybe you know like a few days to live and um, that was scary you know because at first they said a few hours and then they were like hey, we don't know what it's going to be, but at most a few days, but realistically maybe a few hours. And so we signed her up for hospice, and I told work, and I took a month off work, um, not by my choosing, because this was on the 28th that we put her into hospice. And uh, I went ahead and, or 29th, 29th, 29th. 
we went ahead and it was her birthday the 29th and she spent it in the hospital and we spent it with her in the hospital and we <laughs> sang happy birthday to her because she always would sing a specific birthday song to me every single year and to Sam every single year and uh, it was today is your day so I would like to say happy birthday to you from Holly and Minky too. And when I lived with her, we would call people and we would say from Holly and Garrett too. But um, we sang that to her. And um, the next day at about 3.45, she was gone. And I was there. I was holding her hand the entire time and I, I watched her on to the next life and it was very it's weird it was really weird to like watch my mother pass away you know it wasn't like getting a phone call and saying like hey they're gone it was like I watched her take her last breath and that was very it was very haunting you know because throughout my life you know, I, I had known her for 31 years, and throughout my life, I'd seen her go from like this young, very, very beautiful, she was so pretty, so funny, this great, lively person who was just so full of life and energy, and her, just had the biggest sparkling eyes, and just a smile that made everyone like, made everyone smile, and I watched her <laughs> gain weight, get slightly big, what we would call her Bertha, and then, well, that was her sister's nickname for her, and then thin out, gain weight, and then um, thin out until she was really emaciated by the end. Like, she was, I think, like 78 pounds when she passed away, and that had been going on for a while because she just refused to eat, you know? Like, we kept on saying to her, like, hey, you need to wake up in the morning and eat. She was like, Garrett, I'm not hungry. I just don't want to. And what can you say? You know, you can just say, like, all right, I'm sorry. Like, you don't have to. And um, so she was very malnourished. Her legs were atrophied. She had the COPD. And, again, the theory was, like, she was. She knew her time was coming near, and she was doing it to herself. Because, you know, she had always said to me, she doesn't want to be in a wheelchair. She doesn't want to be hooked up on tubes. When the Terry Schiavo case was going on, like, she was like, I do not want to be in that situation. Like, if I'm ever, ever in that situation where I'm lying in bed on, like, a, a breathing tube, like, please let me go. And I guess that's, you know, her mindset. And, you know, my, my aunt recently was telling me how they had talked about it. And she had told her, like, you know, she knew the end was coming and how she didn't want to be living anymore in this current condition she was in. So, you know, that's that. You know, she passed away December 30th, and it's been almost two months, and it's been quite a roller coaster because some days I'm fine, and I'll go to work and not think about her, and then, like, out of nowhere, something will trigger it, and I'll run to the bathroom, and I'll cry, or I'll come home and cry. And then again, a few days I'll be fine and I'll cry. And people say that that's normal in the grieving process. And I'm seeing a grief counselor and he's helping. And um, it's just, it's very weird, you know, because I'll see something on Facebook that's like, hey, I, some memory from five years ago. And I'm like, oh, sweet. And then I'll go ahead and check it out. And then all of a sudden there's like, she would always comment on like every single Facebook post. So I'd see her and then she'll say something or I'll see something funny, and I'll be like, hey, I should probably show her that. And then I remember, like, she's not around anymore. And it, it's weird, because it hasn't, like, fully clicked in my head. Like, I know physically. I've watched her go. I know she's gone. Like, I have her ashes. I know she's gone. But my mind is not 100% remembering that that's a thing. And so, like, I'll wake up. And I'll have my reminder tell me, like, you should probably call your mom, which I haven't turned off yet because I just don't want to. But it's like I keep forgetting that I can't just go to her house and say hi to her. I can't pick up the phone and call her. And I know, again, that's part of the grief process. But it's like 
I don't fucking like it. I just miss her, you know? She was so funny. She's where I got my personality from, you know? She was so funny and she was so nice. And everybody that ever had anything to say about her was just like, she was just such a nice person. She was always so nice to me. Like any of my friends that would come over to my house, she would always offer them food. And hey, if you have no place to stay, you can stay here. They loved her. And I loved her. She was such a good person. And I mean, I know she had her problems with alcoholism and that haunted her life for a long time and she was addicted to that for a long time until she kicked the habit a few years ago. But like, that didn't stop her from being a good person. You know, she always cared about me. She always cared about those around her before she cared about herself. But, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> so, there's that. Next thing is, um, my real estate. I, you know, I started my real estate courses uh, for Florida back in August. I finished my course, and now I'm signed up to do the state exam. And I just need to wait for the application to clear to be able to. <coughs> Sorry. I need to wait for the application to clear so I can get the go ahead to do the state exam. And um, so while I'm doing the. Uh, while I'm waiting. Oh my god, my nose is dripping. Oh my god, I don't have any like paper around. Okay, this is gonna be gross. Ah, gross. Ew, ew, I can feel it on me. <laughs> god. I've never done that before, so please, I know I'm gonna get backlash on that, but yeah. Um, so yeah, real estate. I just need to wait for the application to pass, and then I can go ahead and sign up for the state exam, and then I can study for it, and you know, do all that stuff, and then I'll be a real estate agent, which is cool, but it's also scary because it's a whole new career field, and everyone I know has been like, oh my god, you're going to be such a good real estate agent. And I'm like, I hope so, because so far everyone has a lot of faith in me, but they also had a lot of faith in me for acting, and that didn't happen. But I don't know. It's, it's a different field, and I don't know. But anyways, so that real estate is a thing I'm doing now. And uh, now we are, uh, what is next? Oh yeah, Twitch. So <laughs> I haven't streamed on Twitch in apparently eight months. And I found that out yesterday when I was out at karaoke with some of my coworkers and I was wearing this Twitch shirt. I don't want to raise it up because it's got the snot in it now, but <laughs> I was wearing my Twitch shirt. Here we go. There you go. And um, he was like, oh my God, do you stream on Twitch? And I was like, well, I used to. And then I he went to my channel and said last stream eight months ago and I was like oh my god it's been eight months so uh, I don't know I want to stream again but my computer's not set up because again we're at my mother-in-law's house and there's not a lot of room here for Sam and I and they, you know we have our own room and we have our stuff but like I don't want to hook up my desk or at my computer because then I also feel like that takes away from my drive to do other things like if I have my computer set up I'm going to want to stream all the time I'm going to want to play video games, and then it kind of puts me in this, like, vegetative mode where I'm not really getting anything done. But when I'm here and without a computer, I'm at least, like, focusing on my real estate. I'm focusing on things that matter. You know, I'm reading a lot more. Like, right now, I'm juggling five different books, and just in 2020, 2021 alone, I've read seven already. And this is coming from someone who, yes, I read in the past, and I've read, like, over my entire life, but I've only read maybe 30 books in, like, 31 years <laughs> so it's one of those things where like I've read seven books in a month and that's like or two months whatever um, and I'm reading to Sam at night uh, the Goosebumps books right now it was Alice in Wonderland and then it was like some fairy tales and then we picked up the Goosebumps books and we're reading those because she has like really bad insomnia and she can't get to sleep very well so now when I read to her, she can at least close her eyes and just listen, and then eventually she'll go, okay, I'm falling asleep, and then she goes to sleep. Then I put my book away, the Goosebumps books, which we're on the third one now, <laughs> and luckily they're quick and easy, but anyways, and I'm juggling the Gunslinger with my buddies in LA, doing a book club where we meet up like on Zoom every two weeks and we discuss like the next chapter. I'm doing like The Invisible Man because I want to get through all the classics like Frankenstein, Picture of Dorian Gray, etc., etc., um, the Glass Castle, and like uh, some other ones, I forget. I have a, I've got a bunch of books I'm juggling right now, and I finished like Ready Player One, and that was amazing. 
and I got a Kindle, so like I'm like reading a lot of books, and it's awesome. But yeah, so there's that. And so for Twitch, like I don't know, like it's I want to, and I, I really want to get back on that train. But again, my computer's not set up, and that probably won't be until we actually get our own place, which who knows when that'll be. Um, probably after I like sell one or two houses and we could like move into either a down payment for a house or be an apartment which we're trying to not do an apartment because that's just wasted money and now that I'm learning about real estate it's like it's a better option to like gain the equity in your real estate than it is to just piss it away in an apartment but anyways um, but I was thinking about doing like IRL streams or games mobile games and again like I need to like test the waters with that because again like if I dive into that then I might end up not focusing on real estate so it might be like after I finish my real estate that I'll start doing that and then I can do like IRL streams of like my real estate life and the career and like how I'm like oh I'm setting up this house or I need to do this or I don't know but for the time being like I haven't done any of that and it's funny because I had said I didn't want to do another 20 minute video and this one's 21 minutes so <laughs> there is that um but anyways, that's pretty much the update that I had in mind. I don't think there's anything else. And if there is, I'll probably update this time since I'm not doing anything. I'll probably update smaller updates in the coming weeks. I'm hoping so. And if not, then oh well. <laughs> but yeah, so at least you guys know where I am right now. And I'm in Florida and doing real estate and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, so there's my update. Enjoy your February, I guess, and hopefully we'll uh, hopefully I'll update you again soon when I come up with more ideas on what I actually needed to update with. Whatever, <laughs> twenty-two minutes. Goodbye.